cancels out, like, when you write it, sorry, my question, like, doesn't make sense, but, um, you don't write the two after the magnesium also, or is that what you're canceling out? Like, okay, the two, you, when you, when you write a compound, charges have canceled each other out, you don't, you traditionally don't write the charges on top. Okay. Okay. So what's up here are the charges. The number down here tells me how many of each I have. So because when there's no number written, we just assume that to be one. And okay. here I have two chlorines. So one magnesium, two chlorines. That's what that means. Okay. So if the, if there's nothing there, it's one. Right. So, oh. yeah, if there's no subscript, it's one. All right. Okay, so, so look at this case. Now, this in this time, I'm not going to – we're just looking at the charges. And it's asking, okay, what's the formula for this compound? So we have sodium with a plus one charge. And just like I said with the subscripts, if you see a char a sign and there's no number written next to it, you can also assume that to be a one. So when we see Na plus means plus one, and then S S2 minus is obviously minus two. So that means if sodium has a charge of plus one and sulfur has a charge of two minus, that means I need two sodiums to go with my one sulfur. So the formula for this compound would be Na2S. Remember, I had the original charges was one and two minus. I have two two sodiums, so one times one plus plus two minus equals zero. And if, so if, the, if, if it looks like I'm writing the, so the, typically when you talk about charges, you usually put the sign after the number. That's why I'm writing one plus and two minus that way. Um, if, if it's, if you want to write it in front of the number when you're doing it, that's fine. Um, question. Yeah, so you had said that it's always going to equal to zero, these numbers? The total, the sum of all the charges will equal zero. Oh, okay. So here, let me do that again. So the formula in this case for the compound is Na2S. So every ionic compound, the sum of all the ions must add up to zero. So I have two sodium ions, and each sodium ion has a one plus charge. That's two times one plus a single sulfur ion, and the sulfur ion has a charge of two minus. Okay. Don't, I'll show you where the charges come from later. Just, you can just take that, that they gave you that charge at, for at this point. Okay. So two times one plus N or two times positive one plus negative two add up to zero. So again, the total sum of all the charges of the ions must add up to zero. So here's, just, so here's just another illustration of what's going on. We have sodium, which has that one electron in its valence shell, and sulfur has six, normally has six valence electrons in, when it's an atom. The sodium is giving 
electrons to sulfur, so two sodiums are giving, each giving one electron to a single sulfur atom. The sulfur now becomes stable and becomes a sulfide ion with a charge of negative two. Where the sulfur, I'm sorry, the sodium, just like in the other example, still has that charge of plus one. So we have, when it be, they form an ion, we need two sodium ions to combine with one sulfide ion. In that way, the two sodiums and the one sulfide charges will add up to zero. So let's just take another example. So, Take a car now with a lithium ion plus one, and nitrogen has a charge of minus three. Okay. Now, we want to figure out what the formula for this compound will be. We know it's going to have a lithium and a nitride. So we just have to figure out what the ratio is. How many lithiums per nitrogens? And again, we have to combine this in a ratio or a formula that will allow the positive and negative charges to add up to zero. So we're going to, we call that balancing our charges. The charge, the we have equal numbers of positive and negative charges. So wouldn't it be three? Three of what? Lithium. Three lithiums, right? And one. And, and, uh, and one nitrogen, right. So we would write that as just Li3N. And you're starting to notice, I don't know if you've noticed, I'm always putting the positive ion before the negative ion. That's just tradition. We put the positive ions before the negative ions when we write formulas like this. Okay. So this is just doing it out. We need three lithiums and one nitrogen. And again, if we add up the charges, the, the total sum of the charges of my lithium nitride is zero. All right, what would the formula for this compound be? And remember, if they don't show you the number, it's always a one. So I'd have one BA and two, is that a C1, CL? Chlorine, CL. Chlorine, thank you. Yeah, so BA, CL2. So we would just read that as BA, CL2 for the formula. Now, there's another trick if you've taken physical science or chemistry in the past, you might, there's another trick you can use. You might see this pattern already. I can take the number and move it down here like that. And that is a way to derive the formula. So I take that number, pull it here, that number, pull it here. And that gives me the ratio. Okay, so here's a couple more practice problems. So we have lithium and oxygen. Which one is the correct formula for lithium and oxygen? The second one, number two? Yes, 
number two. So we would call that lithium oxide, if we we're going to name it. Okay, and what about B? What would be the correct name, what would the correct formula? One, so right? ALCL3. Can I take a stab at the name? Yeah. Is it aluminum chloride? It is aluminum chloride. That's correct. And for C. Two. Two no. is correct. Okay. Okay. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm yeah. sorry. Two is not correct. Three, right? Three is correct. Three is correct. Mixed up the numbers. <laughs> okay. So again, this is a case where we can flip, we can pull the numbers down and switch them. And that gives us the ratio. Can we always do that? Yes, yeah, this is one exception you'll sometimes, and I'll show you an example. We, you might have to make one extra step. Let's say if I have lead with a plus four charge or four plus and oxygen with the two minus charge. Okay. I can pull them down. But for ionic compounds, I, this is a ratio. So I'm going to take that ratio of two to four and simplify it to make it one to two. So it eventually become PbO2. Okay. And the charges still cancel out. Okay. So you, you can always you can always start that step. But if you're gonna do the the flipping the charges and making them subscripts, just make sure to simplify the ratio. Can you just, if you don't mind, like go over C again? I, yes. For some yep. reason. Yeah. Let's just see. So do I have it on the next slide? No, I don't. Okay, so let's do C. So C, we had my mark. There we go. Was Mg. And it had a charge of two plus, and then nitrogen or nitride ion, which is a charge of minus three. So, you, if you do the crisscross, I'm going to put a three here and a two here. Now, if I look at the charges, I have three magnesium ions with a charge of plus two and two nitrogen ions with a charge of minus three. So this is plus six and negative six, which add up to zero. So means our formula is going to be Mg3, three, three magnesiums, and two nitrites, Mg3 and two. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that was writing formulas. Okay, next we're going to get into naming ionic compounds. And I've already really given you the basic rule for naming compounds. We, for, whenever we deal with an ionic compound, it's always going to be named by stating the name of the positive ion followed by the name of the negative ion. And that's it. Okay. All ionic compounds are named the exact same way. You take the name of the positive ion, you take the name of the negative ion. Now, when it gets a little tricky, is sometimes it's a little hard to figure out what the name of the positive and negative ion are. But once you know what their the names are, we just put them together. So for 
most regular metallic ions that are not transition metals, the name of the ion is going to be the same as the name of the element. So if I'm, for example, sodium atom, when it's an ion, we, we call it a sodium ion. Aluminum is still aluminum when it's an ion. The nonmetal ions, when they're single element ions, are going to have the ending changed with, with an IDE ending. So oxygen will become oxide, nitrogen will become nitride, sulfur will become sulfide, and then we just put the positive and negative name together. So for example, NaCl is sodium chloride. We did AlCl3, which would be aluminum chloride. Now, I know you you've may have heard cases where you use prefixes in compounds like hydrogen peroxide, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. Those are not ionic compounds. So they're going to use a different naming system. When it's ionic, we just state the name of the positive ion and then the name of the negative ion. Okay, so here's just a couple examples. Ki, potassium iodide. So it's potassium is the positive ion. Iodine is the negative atom, but we change the name of iodine to iodide. We give it that IDE ending, and we just put them together, potassium iodide. Magnesium and bromine. The magnesium stays the same. The bromine becomes bromide, and we put them together, magnesium bromide. Al2O3 looks complicated, but still the same rules. Aluminum stays the same. Oxygen becomes oxide, and we stick them together, aluminum oxide. Okay, so whatever we have ionic compounds and the, we're going to say metals that form a single ion, that just means these metals are always going to, they're only going to form one type of charge. We're just going to state the name of the positive ion followed by the name of the negative ion. Okay, the positive ion is the same as the name of the element and the negative ion changes its ending to IDE, and then we put the first, the positive ion followed by the negative ion. Okay, so what would this be called? Magnesium nitrogen. <laughs> Just nitrogen. I don't know. Close. It's okay. It's nit. It's, nit it's it's just nitride. Yeah. You're, nitride. You, you okay. take off. Yeah. You don't have to take nitrogen. No, it's it's just nitride. Okay. But it was a good guess. All right. So then, look at these. A, by the way, A is not, A is just, a, this is the L, this is the compound, C-A-S. How would you name that? Calcium sulfide. Calcium sulfide. And K2O. Two. Potassium oxide. Two. Two. Potassium oxide. They threw this little curveball in there. They said dipotassium oxide. Which, if this was a covalent compound, that would be correct. But this is this; these are ionic, so we don't use those prefixes. This is the only one that's correct. 
Uh, Lindsay, I saw you had up. Sorry, I was just answering the question. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So that takes care of the elements that you see that are metals. Let me go here and go back to this slide. Okay. So that takes care of a lot of these elements here when they form positive ions and aluminum. Now, if you look in the middle of the periodic table, here and down here and here, there's a little bit of a monkey wrench thrown in there. We have atoms of the same element that can form two different types of charges. So I look at, for example, iron can form an iron ion with a two plus charge, and it can also form an iron ion with a plus three charge. So we have to distinguish between those two. Okay, these are two different ions because they have different charges. They're made from the same element, but they have two different ions, so we need to give them different names. Unfortunately, they've simplified the naming for these. The first ion is just called iron with a Roman numeral two for the charge. And the second one is iron with a Roman numeral three. And so we just read as iron two or iron three. Now, before they, if you, this is old school. So if you're ever reading a chemistry textbook from 50 years ago, or you're reading some old labels, they actually used Latin names for these. And this was called ferrous. And this is called ferric. These are very seldom used today. I'm just bringing them up in case you ever come across them. But the, pro the way we name them now is just iron two and iron three. Same applies to all these other elements that form variable charges. Okay, we whenever we need to distinguish between positive ions that form variable charges, we're going to use that Roman numeral as part of the name of the ion. Can you say that one more time for me? Yes. So whenever we have a, come across a case where an element can form more than one type of ion, so chromium, magnesium, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, gold, mercury, lead, bismuth, and tin, we're going to name the, name the ion by using the name of the element followed by a Roman numeral, which represents its charge. Perfect, thank you so much. Sure. So I do have a sheet that will give you a listing of all those ions and their charges, and it's up in with the class materials. I'm not going to expect you to memorize them, but it, you might need to if you go on to take Chem 100. And I, ju I find the best way is just to practice problems with them, and you eventually you just memorize them. So. You're going to see in these cases, these are only elements that are in that middle transition element range or near the bottom of groups four and five. So, so I'll just go back to that periodic table. So you see it's in the middle transition element ranges and in the bottoms of group four and five. And there are some like zinc and cadmium and silver 
they only form one charge. They don't, you don't use the Roman numerals for those. Okay, we only use them Roman numerals when we need to. Okay. Don't worry about this statement. Can lose S electrons from its higher energies as well as well as D electrons. We're not going to get to that for another chat for a few chapters, so you don't need to know that. That's a little beyond what we've covered so far. So just worry about the names. Okay. So iron. We have iron two, iron three, Cu with a plus one. We're going to call that copper one. And there's also a Cu with a plus two. We're going to call that copper two. Okay. Now, the Latin versions for these, this was cuprus and cupric. Okay, sometimes. All right, so. So these are all the... Well, the metals that form more than one positive ion. Okay. This is not an exclusive list, but these are the, the main ones. And notice every one is going to have a Roman numeral indicating the charge. Oh, I forgot. Okay, wait. So questions so far. Now, they put a little star next to Mercury, and it looks a little weird. Now, if you look at Mercury, it says Mercury 1, but you look at the charge, it's plus 2. So what's going on there? Mercury is a little weird. Okay, Mercury forms ions with plus 1 charge. That's true. But for some strange reason, mercury-1 ions always like to be found in pairs. So you'll never see a mercury-1 ion by itself. It's always going to be in a pair. So if they're stuck together, the two one charges have a two plus charge. And that's why they show you this, it written this way. But it's just two mercury ions stuck together. Is it always written because that way? Mercury is just a weird one. It's all it, mercury one ions always found in pairs. Okay. So that's that a little exception when you, when we get to the rule of simplifying and balancing charges. Um, that's one where you don't you wouldn't reduce it beyond a two when it's a mercury one. Okay, I, I showed you this on the periodic table. So they give you kind of a different set of steps for naming these with variable charges, but it's really going to come down to the same rule we sta stated before. Once we figure out the positive ion name and the negative ion, we're just going to put the positive ion in front of the negative ion. So the complexity is determining when you need to use the Roman numerals. So we have a formula of Fe2O3. Now, we know it's going to be some type of iron oxide. Iron has a variable charge. So we have to determine, is this an iron 2 or an iron 3? So we're going to look at the charges. I find the easiest way is just to look at the formula and look at the charge of the, uh, the negative ion. Oxygen is always going to be negative 2. Okay. 
So once you know that, there's only one number that can go here that will result in the positive and negative ions canceling each other up. Okay, if I look at these numbers, two times three is negative six. So I know this times two has to equal positive six so they wouldn't cancel out. So what number must go here? Three. Three. Mm. Okay. It's either two or three, because and three, three is it? Because if I put a three here, then the charges add up to zero. So they give you the formula, but we have to do that step to determine which iron it is. So we have to figure out the charge of that iron ion. And so now this is iron three oxide so if it was iron two oxide the formula would be we'd have a positive two ion and a negative two ion so they would combine a one-to-one -one ratio and it would be feo that would be iron two oxide so you can see the name we have, it's very important we know which iron we have because that affects the formula. Can you do another example of this? Yes. Yeah, we'll do a few more of these. So let's look at... Let me see. Find a good one. Okay, this one, and let's see, is that just that one? Okay, yeah, let's look at this one. So this is tin chloride. A, C, and D don't need Roman numerals, so I'm, I'm, we're just going to look at this one. So... Going back to the periodic table or list of charges, we know that chlorine is negative one. Oh, we have two of them. Okay. Tin can either be plus two or plus three. So in this case, only one of them will work. So what's the charge of this particular tin here? Plus. Remember, and I have plus. Plus two. two or plus two. Okay, because I have two chlorines with a negative one charge, so I, it has to be plus two. I could, that's only way that formula will balance the charges. So then the name is going to be tin with the Roman numeral 2 and chloride. Is there a list of the charges of each element for this or will that be given to us for the problems? I'll give it to you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a table that's similar to this that you can use. So this, this is a good one for the, at least the uh, single element ions. It tells you the ones that have more than one charge. And the ones that have more than one, you need the Roman numerals. The ones that don't, um, you just use, you use it without the, you don't use the Roman numeral. So just to go back to this that previous example, we said this was tin two chloride. So what would this be called? And I'll tell you, you don't need a Roman numeral. Lithium only forms one ion. Lithium sulfide. 
lithium sulfide, right? And this one. Aluminum oxide. Aluminum oxide. And the last one. Even though this is a transition, it only forms one ion, so we don't need a Roman numeral. Zinc oxide? Zinc oxide. Okay. If you don't have the chemical symbols, names memorized, just have, use a periodic table. Okay, you'll have that when you do the homework problems on the exam. And pretty much every chemistry class you I've you'll take will allow you to use a periodic table on a test. Okay. So let's go on to the next slide. So we're still on naming ionic compounds. I want to show you Another issue that comes up. Bear with me one second, I'm just pulling up the slide. <laughs> 